always interesting to me how we have given us the scriptures to study. Now, most people will read them and say, okay, well, I've done my part and kind of pass on it and kind of skip it and go on to something else. Some people will pick up their Bible and study it from cover to cover and never really get the meaning of it. They'll understand what it says, but they won't really react to it or interact with it. They'll treat it like a book, as though it were just an instruction manual and it doesn't have any life to it. God says something different about His Word. He says that His Word would go forth and it would accomplish that purpose with which He designed it. That it would bring forth fruit in a person's life. That it would cause something to happen inside of a person once they heard it. Once they listened and paid attention to it as it worked inside of them. Because you see, when you hear the Word of God, you're going to become convicted or convinced. You're going to become convicted of sin because every one of us, in some way, shape, or form, we sin. We make mistakes. We don't measure up to perfection. We are fallible. We make mistakes. We are, at times, even rebellious. And if I dare say in America, most of the time, we are rebellious. We want our own way. We want our own will. We want to not deny ourselves, but we want to deny everyone else access to us. We want what we want when we want it. Sometimes that's the hardest thing to get over, is the fact that we are at fault. We are the ones who have caused, as it were, the sin to come upon us. And I hear so many people lately, you know, tell me about, oh, the devil this, or, you know, Satan that, or spirit of this, or the spirit of that, or some principality of power, or spiritual wickedness in high places has caused them to do something, so they need to be delivered. You know? Well, frankly, sometimes, you know, I think God really wants to just simply say to us, you need to grow up. You need to discipline yourself. You need to grasp the idea that a lot of what you do and a lot of what's aggravating in your life or failures in your life, you did. It wasn't God failing. It wasn't Satan attacking you. It wasn't as though somehow the Spirit of God failed in His completed task you know, to accomplish for you. But you chose to do what you did and you suffered the consequences of it. Isn't that the truth? Let's be real between you and I. Isn't the fact that most of what you've done, you don't admit you did it, and then you kind of want someone else to fix it for you, like God, to forgive you, and you know, to forget the past, or to forget this, or to forget that, when in reality, you know darn well, you were the one. God speaks today some interesting things to us. Some positive words that can encourage us, but also we have to be honest about it when we come to the realization that most of what we do and suffer from, we cause. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he shall choose. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk you in it. And when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you shall go. I will guide you with my eye. Be not as the horse or as the mule, which has no understanding, whose mouth must be held in a bit and a bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusts in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. Ye righteous, and shout for joy, all you that are upright in heart. O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. In other words, man 
can't solve his own problems there are people that want to put their trust in politicians right now and to the political process to somehow say oh but they made these promises that they can't keep but we believe in it anyways so we we're, we're, we're gonna go with this person or that person but the way of man is not in himself he has to reach out beyond himself to a living God and say help me I can't do it on my own he has to reach inside himself and say God change me for you live inside me and I can't stop myself from doing those things I ought not to do God he reaches out for to say forgive me for I cannot stop this body of sin that I live in this flesh and I sin and that which I would not I do and that which I would not oh God help me and so we find that in man he can't do it and even when the Spirit of God comes in a man you still can't do it what you can do is turn to the Lord and cry out call upon the Lord and be saved seek the Lord and be found that he when he is here there is no sin in his presence there is no turning to the left or to the right but when God is present you are focused in on him for he is your life we ought every day to seek not just to spend a few moments in the word with God but to try to spend the time all day with God so that we would be focused in on the right person as opposed to the right action that we think we ought to do Sometimes I think we forget that what's coming after we die isn't sitting around in heaven worshiping, but we are going to walk with God and talk with Him, much like we should be doing already in this life. So I would share with you, no matter where you are or how you are, think on these things that you ought to do. Walk with God and talk to Him whether you failed or whether you succeeded today, whether you've been a joy or a sorrow, whether you've gone through trials or whether you've gone through tribulations. Recognize that in you is usually the problem, but also in you is the solution. Because Jesus said that, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door, I will come in and sup with him. And in another portion it says that he would bring his father and they would come with him and fellowship with him. In other words, when that scripture was written to Christians and not to unbelievers, God was talking to the church and he was saying, I will be real if you will be willing to open the door for me. Are you? Are you willing to ask God to be real in your life? Are you willing to talk to Him about today's failures and the successes? About where you sinned today, or where you blew it today, or where you failed miserably? Are you willing to just walk humbly with Him and talk to Him? If you are, and you're willing to admit your faults, before him and not blame Satan not blame the flesh not blame the devil but just admit it was you you'll find you'll become upright in heart and then your eye will be focused in on 